Hello everybody, how's it going? Ben Gothard here, founder of Project Egg. I love doing that. It never gets old. I absolutely love it. And today it is January 1st, 2018. So I hope everybody had an amazing New Year's Eve. Hope everybody was safe. Hope everybody made it home. And now it's 2018, baby. It's time. This is our year. This is our year to do all of the things that we want to do, to reach all of the goals that we want to reach and to accomplish those things that we want to accomplish. It is my goal to help you turn your dreams into reality. And I'm not going to stop until I've accomplished that goal. Okay. Now, the reason I say turn your dreams into reality is because there are a couple steps that we need to take in order to do that. First, we need to take those dreams and turn them into goals. Then we need to take those goals and we need to plan for them. Then we need to take those plans and we need to execute. And so once we execute on those plans, that is when it becomes reality. That's how we're going to go from dream to reality. So let's just begin. Let's begin with the goal planning. Let's tackle this baby head on. Let's hit it. Got my fluffy cap on. So that has nothing to do with it, but I'm so excited. I've got a little sidetrack. But let's get back to what's important, which is your goal planning. And how are we going to do our goal planning? We're going to think bigger. We're going to get crazy, and we're going to reach for the stars. Okay. Now, why do I say that we need to reach for the stars? Why do I say that that's so important? Well, the things that we do in life and the results that we see are directly a result of of the results are a direct result. The the things that we accomplish are a direct result of the goals that we set. So if we set incredible goals at a ridiculous level, then we're going to take action to get to that level. But if we set goals that are down here and we set goals that are really low and we lower that bar for ourselves, then we're going to go and we're going to aim for that. We're going to take action that is proportional to our goals. So we want to set goals that are ridiculous, that are super insanely, amazingly ridiculous and high flying and goals that reach to the stars because we want to get ourselves into that mindset of I can do anything because you can, right? But if we if we aim for this if we aim for the sky, then that's where we're going to go. Okay? We don't want to aim down here, right? A lot of people say be realistic. Okay? I think that that is an uh, that's a terrible idea. I think that's a terrible idea and here's why. When you are realistic, then you are saying that you are only capable of doing this one thing. Okay? And when you say that you're realistic, you are setting a cap for yourself, saying that you have to go to this level and that's all you can go to. I want to think huge and I want to push myself to do more than I think I can. I want to push myself to be better than I think I can. Okay? And I want you to do the same thing. Because when you push yourself to that higher level, you are going to get there. You are going to take the action that is necessary to reach that higher level. Okay? So let's talk about how we can set these goals. Okay? Well, let's first figure out what we want to do. Okay? So let's think about our passions. What are we passionate about? Okay, what are we good at? What can we potentially make money doing? Right? These are kind of the three buckets that we need to fill when we're setting a good goal. And the reason I say this is because there is a brilliant author by the name of Jim Collins, and he wrote this book, Good to Great. And he did a long study over many, many years of what makes a company great, what makes a great company. And what he figured out is that the companies that are the most successful and the most sustainably successful are the companies that pick a goal, a massive goal called a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal that fulfills three criteria. One, they are passionate about that goal. Two, they know that, or at least they think that they can be the best in the world at it. And three, it is profitable. Okay? So we're looking for passion. We're looking for skill. Can you do it? Right? So do you love it? Can you do it? And three, we're looking for profitability. Can you make money off of it? Right? And so think of it like a Venn diagram. 
right? Think of it like uh, three intersecting circles. I'm going to grab a marker and we're going to write this out. We're going to we're going to go draw on this board a little bit, okay? So we want to think of it as a Venn diagram, okay? Three things here, okay? And so we have our those are really small circles, but it's okay. We have our passion, okay? We have our skill, and we have our profitability, okay? So we want to make sure that we're hitting all three of those things in the middle here. We want to make sure that we're hitting things that we're passionate about, things that we have skill in, that we can be the best in the world in, things that we can make a lot of money doing, right? Because when we hit all those three things, when we hit all those three things, then we are setting ourselves up to be great, to be very, very successful, okay? So that is very important, is when we're thinking about what goals we want to set, and we're setting that BHAG, that big, hairy, audacious goal, it is so incredibly important that we keep those three things over here, those three things in mind, the passion, the passion, the skill, and the profitability. And when we give ourselves a goal that is within those three circles of passion, skill, and profitability, then we enable ourselves to grow into that goal. Right, because if we're passionate about it, then we're going to be able to stick with it because it's going to hold our interest. We we love doing it. We really have a sincere um, desire to pursue this day in and day out. Right, because becoming great and sustainably great, it's a long grind and it's a slow grind and it's one that's going to take us a very long time to do. Okay, so if we're going to be able to accomplish this goal, we need to make sure that we have passion for it so that we can continue going. Because there are going to be days when you just don't feel like doing it. There are going to be days when you really want to quit. There are going to be days when you just want to say, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to give up. I want to go drink a beer and do whatever and give up, right? There are going to be those days, but it's that passion that's going to get you through, okay? So think about that in the beginning. Think about how when you're first starting something, you're really excited about it. And so you have all this enthusiasm, all this momentum, but that's not going to be that same level of energy that's going to continue on through those years. It's going to ebb and flow. So you need to think, okay, I need to be pa passionate enough about this goal to where when I hit that low point, I still want to do it. And it's strong enough of a passion to where I'm not going to give up, right? And this is a hard question. This is a hard thing to like be real with yourself about, but the the more that you tackle these difficult questions in the beginning the less that they're going to come back to bite you in the ass later on right because you don't want to just go through and not think about these things and then have them come back to bite you later when you've invested so much time and potentially money into chasing these dreams you want to think about them beforehand so that you can prepare for the future and you can give yourself the best chance of being successful Right? You want to give yourself the best chance of being successful. That's why passion is so important. Okay, The next is skill. right? And go like this so you can see, skill is the second bubble right here. Okay, I'm going to get this. I'm going to, I'm going to get the, the whole thing. On. Okay, um, The second one is skill. And the reason that that one is so important, right? passion is, in my opinion, the most important. If you don't love it, you're not going to stick with it. But if you don't have the skill for it, right? if you don't have the natural talent, then it's going to be really hard for you to compete at a very, very high level with other people or companies or businesses, whatever that you're competing with that do have that talent, right? So think of somebody like Michael Jordan, okay? Michael Jordan is arguably one of the best basketball players in the history of the game, okay? No matter how hard I train and no matter how much I lift and, and practice and train, Michael Jordan is always going to be better than me at basketball. And I need to be okay with that. And I need to be self-aware enough and I need to know enough about myself to realize that I'm not going to be able to compete skill-wise with Michael Jordan, right? That just needs to be that I need to be real with myself and understand that there are some things that I can and cannot do, right? And this is where self-awareness comes into play because when you're choosing a huge goal to set and when you're choosing what you want to invest your time into, playing on your strengths is such an important part because if you bet on your strengths, then you're giving yourself that leg up on the competition, right? So I'll give you an example. One of the things that I'm really good at 
is communicating, right? Via the written word, through videos, through through speaking with others. Uh, you know, I really like to talk to people and networking with other people comes easily to me. So I want to do things and I want to spend my time developing that strength, right? Now, art, for example, is something that I'm not very good at. I'm not very good at painting pictures. I'm just not. Right. And I'm sure if I spent a lot of time with it and worked on it and took painting lessons, I could get better at it. But I'd be starting down here. Whereas if I worked on networking, for example, I'd be starting here. So I already have this much more advantage when I work with my strengths, when I invest in my strengths, when I double down on my strengths instead of trying to work with my weaknesses. And to be honest with you, I'm OK at not being good at art. I'm okay with that. I'm not saying art's not important. I think it's very important, and I enjoy, you know, looking at art and trying to understand it. I don't really understand it most of the time, but that's just something that I'm okay with, right? And so the reason I bring that up is because when you're looking for your skill, because we're setting goals that we're passionate about, we have we have a decent skill in, and it's very profitable. When we're looking for that thing we have skill in, we need to be real with ourselves, okay? We need to be very self-aware and say, I am good at this. I am not good at this. Let me pursue the thing that I'm good at. Let's pursue the things that we're good at. Let's double down, triple down, quadruple down on our strengths because it does not make sense to invest all our time in our weaknesses, okay? I believe it's Albert Einstein that said something about judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree. If you're a fish, you're never going to climb a tree as well as a monkey because a monkey, was, that, that's what a monkey does. A monkey climbs a tree, but a monkey's not going to outswim a fish, right? You, you, you can see the difference there. So think about that in terms of yourself and in terms of what you want to do and in terms of what you want to invest your time doing, okay? But a lot of people, and I'm not saying that I'm impervious to this. I struggle with this all the time, as does everybody, but a lot of people have trouble realizing what they're good and not good at okay a lot of people struggle with being self-aware and understanding hey i'm a person and i have different strengths and weaknesses and i'm good at some things and not good at other things right so one way to make this easier on yourself is to think of it and you know you might be saying well, that's a little silly to think of it that way but to think of it like a video game Right? Think of it like a video game and think of yourself as the video game character. Okay? Now, in a video game, when you're a video game character, you pick characters based on their strengths and weaknesses, right? And they have different skills and you have your life points and your, you know, ability power and strength and all that stuff, right? But but think about that in terms of of business, right? Each character has its strengths and has its weaknesses each company has its strengths and has its weaknesses each entrepreneur has their strengths and has their weaknesses so whereas a video game it lists it out for you you know with the nice little bar graphs and you can choose okay i want to be an archer or i want to be a wizard or i want to be a fighter with this you know with the sword with the, with the shield right you could be more offensive you could be more defensive that stuff applies to entrepreneurship as well. And when you think about yourself and what you want to pursue, think of yourself as a video game character. Like if you had to define yourself as a video game character, what stats would you give yourself, right? Or maybe you don't want to think of it in terms of video games. Let's think of it in terms of sports, okay? Uh, and specifically basketball, right? Let's think in terms of basketball. We know that somebody like LeBron James is going to be a much stronger, he's going to be very strong at driving to the goal, right? Or, or a center. Somebody like Shaquille O'Neal is really good at playing down low in the paint and dunking, okay? But um, Shaquille O'Neal is not going to sit out on the perimeter and shoot three-pointers all day. That's not his game. So it doesn't make sense for him to spend so much time working on his threes it spent it, it makes more sense for him to spend time working on his strengths and playing to his strengths so that is exactly the point that i'm trying to make 
is when you're picking what to devote yourself to and what to spend your time doing, it makes a lot more sense to double down on your strengths, triple down on your strengths, go all in on what makes you unique, go all in on what is your strength as opposed to your weakness, okay? So that is the passion and the skill. Let's talk about profitability. And that one's kind of a no-brainer, right? When you're going into a specific industry or you're pursuing a specific business, you know what taste you have, right? Some people are very minimalist. They don't need much. You, you know, you could probably get by with a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars of expenses per month. Other people want to live more luxuriously, and it's not good or bad. It is what it is. So again, this comes back to self awareness. Realize what sort of taste that you have, what sort of life and lifestyle that you want to live, and then pick a business and a business model that corresponds to that. Right? If you're somebody who wants to be in the action all the time and you want to be like hitting the trenches, you want to work all the time, you want to be doing this, that, and the other thing, then you're probably going to be better suited for a very active business where you need to be in it selling and in it building relationships with people and in it managing your team. Um, so that's going to be a business that is going to be more suited towards you, something where you need to be in it managing things. So for example, a marketing agency, when you're, when you're running a marketing agency, I know because I've run a marketing agency for three years, you need to be out there constantly getting new business. You need to be out there servicing your current clients. You need to be out there managing your team, right? So these are all things that you need to be actively doing. So you need to be in there working, grinding all the time. Okay. That's a very active business model. The one that I just described. Now you can run a marketing agency a little more passively, but for the sake of the example, I'm talking about one that's more active. Okay. So that is one example of an active business model. Now more of a passive business model is going to be something like investing. So like long-term investing, let's say you are investing in real estate and what you're doing is you're going and you're grabbing humongous multifamily residential deals and you're getting the investors together and you're finding the deals and you're making the deals happen. Once you make the deal, the deals happen, then you sit back and you collect the rent every month. Okay. So that's more of a passive income stream. That's more mailbox money. Um, as a recent entrepreneur that I was talking to termed in, I thought that was a great term. So I'm going to totally use that. Um, so that's more mailbox money where you don't have to be like actively in there every day. You can get a property management company. You can get a marketing team to get new, um, uh, what's the word residents to come rent from you renters. And that's more passive. So think about it. what sort of business model do you want? Do you want more of an active one? Do you want more of a passive one? How profitable is it going to be? And when you find the mix of passion, skill, and profitability, that is a strong goal. That is a very strong goal. That's something that you can stand behind and that you know that you love it, you're good at it, and you can make money doing it. And with those three things, you are setting yourself up for the maximum amount of success. Okay? So now that we have our BHAG, okay, let's think bigger. Let's always be thinking bigger. We have to be thinking bigger. Okay, regardless of what goal that you set, there is a chance that you can accomplish it. Okay, it's not rocket science, unless you're actually doing a company that's involved in rocket science, then it is rocket science. But you get what I'm saying. It's math. You have to figure out, okay, I want to generate X number of dollars in revenue by X date. Okay, so let's say, for example, you want to generate a million dollars in revenue, so you, or, or let's say in your bank account, you want to have a million dollars in your bank account by December 31st, 2018, okay, a full year from now, or let's say January 1, 2019, 365 days from today, you want to have a million dollars in your bank account, okay, well, that's a million dollars divided by 365 days. So you know that you, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get my calculator out. We're going to solve this real time. Let's do this real time. 
So a million dollars, just so you can see that's six zeros, okay, divided by 365 days. So you need to make $2,739.73 per day in order to get there, okay? Is that a big goal? Yeah, that's a, that's a big goal. Is it doable? Absolutely. And now that you know the math behind it, now you can pick a business model that can allow you to generate that money, right? So let's say you need to make $27.93 a day. $27.93 a day, okay. What can you sell that can generate you $2,793 per day? Well, you can sell an online course. You can sell somebody else's online course. You can sell a big product. You can sell a massive computer. You can sell a refrigerator. There are any number of things that you can sell in order to hit those goals. Okay, But it's about being real. It's about being transparent with yourself, real with yourself, being very self-aware and saying, this is what I want to accomplish and then coming up with a plan to do it. But the bigger you set that goal and the higher that you reach, the more you're going to accomplish. Let me, let me say that again. The bigger the goal and the higher that you reach, the more you are going to to accomplish because it takes the same amount of effort to set a goal that is this high as it does to set a goal that is this high. The math is just different. It takes the same amount of effort to go here or to go here. It takes different skills, different skill set, different mindset, but the effort is the same. The effort is the same. So I challenge you to think about what your goals are for 2018 and beyond. Think about what you actually want to accomplish and then break it down with math. Figure out what you need to do in order to accomplish that goal. Write it out, get obsessed with it, and take massive action to do it. Okay? Because the bigger we set our goals, the bigger we set our goals, the more we're going to achieve. The bigger we set our goals, the more we're going to achieve. And I want to see you achieve your goals. I want to see you achieve your goals because you deserve to achieve your goals. I deserve to achieve my goals. You deserve to achieve your goals. My goal is to see you achieve your goals. So let's do it. Let's do it together. Me and you, we're going to get to our goals. We're going to reach it. We're going to do it. We're going to get to where we want to go. Okay? Let's pick goals that overlap these three circles. Okay, the passion, the skill, the profitability, and let's aim high, baby. Let's aim high. All right, let's change the world together. Bye.